While megapixels do not mean a whole lot, when it comes to social media, they do make a difference when we're talking about print or even some web uses. Now, no matter why you're here, why you wanna increase the megapixel count in your images, this video is gonna show you how to do it in two different ways. Hey everybody and welcome. I'm Austin James Jackson, a professional photographer based in Southern Utah. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to upscale your images to add megapixels, which can help when you need to make a small image larger or you need to fix a low resolution. Regardless of why you're here or what kind of image you have to start with, I'm gonna show you how to resize your image in both Photoshop and Topaz Photo AI. Topaz Photo AI certainly does a better job, which I'm gonna show you a comparison in this video, but I know a lot of you guys that are here may already have Photoshop, so I wanna show you a way that you can do it without needing to purchase additional software. If you don't have either program, I definitely think you should get Topaz Photo AI over Photoshop for this particular use. I think it's gonna be the best bet. Without waiting any longer, let's go ahead and jump right in. This is the image I'm gonna be upsizing today. If you have something that's lower resolution, this these techniques will still work perfectly fine. You can see this image is only 19.9 megapixels and I'm not super happy with the detail of the tree. You can kind of see when I zoom in here, it's pretty pixelated through there. It's not gonna look good if I blow this up as a print or blow it up large for my website. Originally, this came from this photo, so I obviously did quite a bit of cropping, um, which will reduce the megapixels. You can see I went from 60.2 to 19.9, and again, like I said, subject just isn't looking good. So let's look at the first way to do this, which is going to be in Photoshop. You don't need to have any prior experience with Photoshop in order to do this. Uh, all you need to do is load your image into Photoshop here. You're going to unlock the background layer and go up to Image. You're going to go down to Image Size, and then we're going to adjust the size. Now in this particular image, I'm just gonna do 200%, so I'm just gonna double the size of the image, but if you wanted to print or uh, resize it for the web to a particular size, you could do that here as well. So essentially what you would do is change this off of percent. You could change it to pixels, inches. Uh, if you're not in the United States and use centimeters or millimeters, you could do that as well. Uh, points, picas, and columns, generally you're not gonna use unless you're doing like some kind of graphic design. But for photography, usually you're gonna use pixels or inches, or if you just want to increase the size and you don't have a desired outcome for the image yet, percent is great as well. If I type in 200 here, it should snap. Um, you don't want to contain the aspect ratio because we don't want to crop the image here. We just want to increase both the width and the height by 200%. You can adjust the resolution as you see fit. If you're doing a print, uh, you might want that at a, something different than if you're exporting it for the web. I'm just going to leave it because like I said, I'm not doing anything with this image at this point in time. I just want to make the tree look a little bit better. Now you're going to go down and make sure that you check the resample box. And you can open these settings here. You wanna make sure to use the bicubic smoother or the preserve details. I find the bicubic smoother to work a little bit better. So I ended up using that one a lot. This one's for an enlargement. If you are uh, reducing the size using this method, you would use uh, the bicubic sharper, which is for a reduction. So you can go ahead and click on that and then we can go ahead and hit okay. Now you can see the image is a little bit larger. Uh, you can't tell the image looks the same on the screen right now, but you can see now we're almost 11,000 pixels on the width side, whereas before we were like 5,500 or something like that. When I zoom into the tree, you can see the pixelation is a little bit better. It's not quite as bad, but I want to show you guys a little bit better way to do this in Topaz Photo AI. So when I load the image into Topaz Photo AI, this is what it's going to look like. It's automatically removing the noise. I'm going to turn that off. Um, not that you would not necessarily want to do that, but I, I just want to show you the upscale in this video. But if you do purchase Topaz Photo AI or you already own it, it's really nice to be able to remove noise and sharpen in addition to your upscale. And if you have an image with faces, like low resolution faces, you can check this little box here. And that is going to make your faces look a lot better. It's going to recover them a little bit better um, and work its magic to make faces look good. Or you can preserve text as well if you have an image with text. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and hit upscale. Right now it's upscaling by 2x, which is perfect. We could do 4x, we could do max. Or we could even go in here and change this to inches or centimeters and then input exactly what width we would like the image to be. Like I said, I just want to do 2x just to show you how this works. Now for the AI model, got a few choices here. Standard is going to be what you're going to use if you're using like maybe a lower resolution or a lower quality DSLR or mirrorless camera. High fidelity is going to be great for those high quality DSLR or mirrorless cameras like mine where I've just done a lot of cropping. Um, graphics is going to be for things like graphic design. Low resolution is going to be for things that are really, really low resolution. So maybe you scanned a few low resolution photos that you want to upsize. Whatever it may be, low resolution is going to be your friend. 
So again, I'm going to use high fidelity. These settings down here will automatically select. I'm going to turn off use neural engine. Um, long story short, sometimes it causes some issues on my Apple uh, M1 Mac here. So I'm just going to turn it off. And we've got minor denoise, minor de blur, and fixed compression. I can zoom in here. You can go down here and go to like 200% if you want. I really like having this sliding bar here. On the left is before, on the right is after. So you can see as I slide through there, how it adds detail. Now, especially in here, I really like the detail that it adds. You can see that's before and now after. So if I wanted to do more denoising, I could bring this up or more deblurring, I could bring that up as well. Or if there was some compression that I needed to fix, I could bring that up as well. But these settings, uh, which was the default when I loaded this image in, ended up working out just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and save this image and then we'll do a little comparison. Okay, I've got my images loaded here into Photoshop. This is just for comparison purposes. I just loaded them as layers so I can toggle them. I've got Topaz on the top is what you're looking at right now. And I've got Photoshop here on the bottom. Of course, when we're zoomed out like this, we're not gonna tell any difference at all, but Let's go ahead and zoom into my subject and see the difference that it make. Okay, so right now you're looking at the topaz. I'm zoomed in pretty close here. No, it's not perfect, but it's definitely better than what I had that you can't see any pixelation anymore. Um, then I'm gonna toggle this off. Now you're looking at Photoshop. This is the Photoshop. This is topaz. This is Photoshop. So you can see Topaz did a significantly better job. So a lot of stuff here in the Photoshop version, like you can see this blue fringing. Um, these aren't super sharp and I can still see pixelation on the edges. Whereas the topaz is looking a little bit better. Either option is good. And I mean, when you're zoomed out, you can't tell too big of a difference. So if you don't care too much about the results and you already own Photoshop, um, maybe you can just make it happen in Photoshop. But if you are looking to buy a software and you're looking for the best quality results, I'm finding that topaz is doing a lot better job, at least as it stands right now. Maybe in the future, Adobe will improve this feature in Photoshop. But as it stands right now, Photoshop doesn't do a super great job, but it is there, it is an option, and it is available for those of you guys that already own Photoshop. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really hope it was helpful for you. If you do not own the software and you do plan on purchasing it, I'd be super grateful for you to use my affiliate link down below. It helps me to get a really, really small kicker on your purchase. It doesn't cost you a dime. For a small creator like myself, that means the world to me, and it helps me to continue making these free videos for you guys. Thanks again so much for watching. If you've got any questions about the whole process, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments down below. Have a good one. See you later.